Twilight's Nightmare, Chapter 27, Portents It had taken a week for Luna to become frustrated enough to turn her most powerful but least reliable method of divining information. She floated in the air of her bastion over a dozen dream orbs. She had pulled them in her bastion to utilize an ability none of the ponies would ever know that they had. Each of the souls that she viewed all shared the ability, a sensitivity to the winds of fate that sometimes could be felt in the dream realm. It was always vexing that as soon as some pony found out they had this ability, they lost it. Until Luna had discovered her own ability. Her mumbling in her sleep had been used many times to predict the future. She paused for a moment and considered if Little Star could have inherited this ability. Would it be wrong or right to try and keep her in the dark to maintain such an ability, should it manifest? With a wave of her hoof, all but one of the orbs formed into a pattern, as threads of Luna's magic formed a web between them, creating a dream catcher, her dream augury. Luna examined the white orb of the last mare, she was an interesting mare, one of the few hybrid ponies that survived past early fullhood. Her talent was finding patterns in seemingly chaotic things and using that to solve all kinds of puzzles. An ability she was recruited for, being put to use supporting Celestia's agents. From what her guard had seen, this mare had sometimes displayed some springingly good instincts. She probably slowly was becoming aware of her ability, Luna wondered how long it would be until she became certain enough for it to stop working. Though she hated to think how many adventurers, oracles, and prophets died because their luck ran out. This Candace practiced both unicorn and pegasus magic, having two separate wellsprings. Perhaps it was to do with her twin soul that fused with her in the womb. She had two complete sets of ley lines that didn't touch, but spiraled around each other. She could have been deliberately created, but as she had no traces of alicorn magic, that was highly unlikely. Unless it was Discord's doing, which would explain his interest in her. But if that was true, she fell a long way from the chaos tree. Discord had taken delight in pulling pranks and otherwise causing trouble for her. Although the mare seemed rather resilient, and just took it in stride, even managing to prank him back. The end result was she kept donuts in her desk specifically for Discord now. Given her talents was essentially finding order in chaos, it made sense. She was a natural foe to Discord. If not for his reform, he would have likely had killed her, or worse. His interest was why Luna was always so wary about including her as part of the dream augury. She rolled that orb across her hoof, and then on a whim added it to the augury. The webs embraced it, lighting up as it activated. In a flash of motion, a shrieking face of a skeletal mare clad in golden crystal with eyes of magenta flame burning with anguish filled rage rushed towards Luna. Despite the spike of fear rushing through her veins, Luna was too experienced to freeze. Her defense was solidly snapped into place in an instant, only to see the image fade before it even reached her. Oh, how she hoped this was just another one of Discord's so-called jump scares. She spent a long moment centering herself before moving on to her next task. It wouldn't do to contaminate her gifts. Luna kissed each orb, as she placed them back into the sky of her bastion, returning them to the dream realm, blessed with the sweetest of dreams for their unknown services. As she placed Candace's, she caught a glimpse of the dream. Well, desiring a princess is not uncommon, but both myself and Twilight? <sighs> she is ambitious. She thought with an amused grin. At least she has good taste. Well, if that's the dream that she wants. Luna said, letting her magic adjust the dream, blessing the imaginary Luna and Twilight with some of her many years of experience. Looking to her bastion sky, smile fading, her eyes turned to slits as she scanned the sky once again, seeking the dream of her Twilight's assassin. Many hours later, Luna had abandoned her search in the dream realm. Now she was taking tea with Cadence, who sat across from her. Luna was using her magic to ignore her body's need to sleep. It would slow the rate that she recovered her power, but that was not much of a disadvantage at the moment. So you still can't find him? Cadence asked, and Luna shook her head. I fear he knows of my talents and is somehow concealing himself. <sighs> what are you gonna do, Auntie? The hunt is not over. I have my night guard hunting for him. He will be found. She declared. So what are you gonna do when you find him? You would not wish to know. Luna said in a flat cold voice. Cadence covered her discomfort by drinking from her cup and changing the subject. Um, so, uh, how are things with Twilight? She asked, changing the subject. They are... Interesting. Cadence raised an eyebrow. That's your answer? Tis true. The pink alicorn's playful glare encouraged Luna to continue. We have talked, and I think she is planning something, but she won't tell me and has expressly forbidden me to try and find out. Cadence looked thoughtful. So she is taking this seriously. She said, humming for a moment before continuing. Even if what she arranges falls flat, try to appreciate it. I imagine she will prevail at her self-appointed task. She does have my former companion for help. She will know my preferences better than any other. Luna said, trying to hide the small amount of uneasiness that she felt whenever she thought of Knight being one of Twilight's companions. You can trust them. Caden said, placing a comforting hoof against Luna's. You are sure? It is my talent and my domain. 
I know love, and I can see into their hearts. Mayhaps it is just me being jealous. My passion has been such a lonely place since my return. Luna mused. So maybe you should invite theirs, or invite them into yours. Luna nodded. It was a very personal request, but given they were going to be married, it was an appealing idea. But she was still a little bit concerned about how Twilight, Night, and Dreams would react. Cadence interrupted her contemplations. Any thoughts of what you will do to try and woo Twilight? And I don't mean just nibble here until she melts against you. Oh, I can do much more than that. Luna said teasingly. A rolled up newspaper lifted in Cadence's aura, before she continued as if she was not threatening the Night Princess with rolled up paper. I have no doubt that you want this to last, but you need to tend to the emotional side first before you go any further with the physical side. Now I know you'd be happy with a purely physical relationship, but once Twilight gets over the newness of the side of her, she'll want more. Luna did her best to think and avoid laughing. Cadence's weapon was just so silly. Luna knew that Twilight cared deeply for all of her friends, but had not been able to see into her dreams since her carnal side had awakened. This was likely because she didn't know how to allow others past her bastion's defenses. What would you advise me to do? Find things that Twilight enjoys and always remember to be yourself. You can't- Cadence paused for a moment before giving Luna a serious look. You should not build relationships of any type with lies, wearing a mask, or playing a role. Trying to be some pony else would only backfire. Lisa, I am more than confident in myself. I need no such deception. Remember that Twilight is your equal and not one of your ponies, and you should be fine. Cadence cautioned. No, I do believe I promised to attend to your ley lines. Cadence shifted nervously. And you challenge me not to enjoy it? With a wave of her wing, Luna directed some shadows to billow out, forming into luxurious cushions. Lay yourself down and spread your wings. I promise I won't do anything that you would not approve of right now. Cadence carefully walked over and settled down, spreading her wings as requested. What should I expect? Luna moved over, keeping her usual teasing nature in check. This was just a simple task, as mundane as everyday ablution. As much satisfaction as she could gain by teaching Cadence how much pleasure could be had, she would not. Luna reached out with a single primary, charging it with a mix of Earth Pony and Pegasus magic. Cadence followed the feather with her eyes, clearly having sensed the magic being used. Auntie, before I forget, you have to teach me to make these. She said, snuggling down into the comfortable cushions. Of course. Luna said, letting the charged feather trace along the main ley line in Cadence's wing. Luna watched the muscles in her back tense, and then relax as a content hum escaped from her niece's lips. Oh, that is pleasant, but I've had better massages and far better preening. This does not- Luna reached out with her other wing, and placed a single feather on Cadence's beautiful horn. Brace yourself. She cautioned. Why? Cadence asked. Luna knew exactly what she was doing. Cadence's horn had an immense amount of built-up crystal magic residue, and this would take a lot of power. She slowly moved to top Cadence, pinning her in place. Auntie! Be at ease. I just need to be able to hold you still and counter any magic that you may release when your horn is cleared. Cadence took a calming breath. Luna could see the trust in her niece's eyes. The benefit of being able to know the hearts of any pony, she could have utter faith that she had nothing to fear from her. Looming over Cadence and placing her own horn against her niece's, she began. The night guard's training and stoic composure was put to the test when Cadence reacted. Luna knew what she would be seeing in some of their dreams when they slept. About an hour later, Luna looked at the sprawled out form of Cadence. She was still purring, wings trembling at every slight breeze, and small sparks falling from her horn. Noting that convulsions had stopped, she used her shadow magic to wrap Cadence in a blanket, tucking her in. Having the attractive form of the pink alicorn laying like that was more than a little distracting. If it weren't for the hunts for the missing teacher, and the fact that she was soon to be married to Twilight, she would have been very tempted to use her own wing instead of the blanket. A few words, a few gentle ministrations with her fangs, and Luna knew she could make Cadence at least consider upgraded from Shining Armor, at least for a whole second. Luna turned back to her painting that she had been working on to pass the time. It was a life painting of Cadence in her current state, captured in exquisite detail. She could have used magic to simply conjure the image, but she much preferred the work with wing, hoof, mouth, and mane. It just felt more tangible, somehow. The Tantibus slunk in, stepping out from her shadow. No luck? Luna asked. Luna's creation seemed to curl in on itself. Luna put down her brush and reached out, stroking the Tantibus's mane reassuringly. It will be alright. She said in a warm tone, not letting her anger or disappointment enter it. The Tantibus would at least think some of them were directed towards her. Show me the report. The Tantibus stepped closer, placing her horn to Luna's. The collected intelligence gathered by her night guard in Philadelphia flowed into her mind. Many less important problems were located, but nothing that would be dealt with this moon and maybe not even the next one. Good girl. Luna said affectionately, again stroking the Tantibus's mane. Now go, and check in with her family in Cloudsdale. 
Luna continued, sending the mental image of both the location and the night guard assigned there. The Tantibus nodded, and took a single step back, then slipped back into Luna's shadow. Luna sighed. She wanted to smash something, or more accurately, some pony. Some pony that she could not currently locate. She glanced towards Cadence, then after one moment copied her breathing technique. What do you know? She thought as she felt some of the stress leave her. She turned back to her painting, considering. Now, how to finish the painting? Do I make it a work of art or a prank? Don't you dare! Cadence slurred, still drunk on all the sensations that she was feeling. Uh, or what? Cadence spent a vast amount of effort to get her next words out carefully. I... will... tell... Twilight. Luna's expression fell. Uh, fine. You win. Cadence snuggled into the shadowy fabric that wrapped around her, seeming to fall back into a slumber. I can't tell if Luna actually wants to sleep with Cadence or not. Because she's certainly seeming like a horn dog, that's for sure. It's just a funny thing to think about sometimes. Anyway, let's get on to our humorous donators. Top donators TacoCat598, Peter Coltard, J Tin Man, Darkseid, Gauntlet, and only one thing. Zarsex30, Strix, Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moonheart, Drake Love Dragon, Pastel Skies, Austin Rollin, Crazy Killer 557, Stu Hex, Dospo, Madman Stan, Delta Omega, Jack Hedge, Rune Siphon 9852, Hansen Norman, Stephen Bingham, Michael Dale Armour, Dash of Evergreen, Rhiny Dragonwolf, Ponyman, Tal Rasha, The Toilet Snake, Sword Brother and Mordred, Ron and Wandering, Random Person Man Guy, Easy, Scouchia, Leslie Prickett, Jordan Peterson, Crimson Kazan 9, Lightskin, Monster Giddy, Needs a Life, Mon Biehenek, Lightning Cheese, and many more magical people. Thank you all very much for watching this video, and live life to the fullest.